Welcome to Homestead Miami Speedway qualifying underway for the ARC Music Cup Series. We have the Gen 4 cars out there going around Miami Homestead Speedway. A little bit shorter field than usual tonight. We got some competition for drivers tonight. A lot of options for the drivers. So, uh, ooh, 16 cars here. Qualifying kicking off here. We see Clint Cox in the 03. Clint, very strong last week until he picked up a penalty late in the race. He's back out here to do it again and try to prove all the doubters that he can beat him. I think he can. He was fastest one in practice. Right up against that fence. Welcome in, Mama Sneed. Check out Trenton in the Steve Tombstone Game Farm Corvette. Get on board footage here. Make sure all the cameras are good to go for race time. There we go. Rocketing down the back stretch. Turn three. Keeping it right up high. Trenton's first lap is a 32.466. Good enough to beat Dalton Hayes. Keep it right up against the fence. Watch Triton out from the farther cameras. Heading back down the back stretch into three. Trenton still leads the pole time here. Let's we'll see if he's able to get any quicker. Clint Cox on his second lap, 32.001. Trent's second lap is quicker, but not quick enough to beat Clint. Trenton will settle in that second spot. Hayden Lowell beats Clint Cox. When it counts in qualifying, goes to the first car under 32 seconds with the 31.93 smoking lap there from Hayden. Here we see the two of Cody Cleaver. Griffin Jones clocks in in fourth. Cody puts up a 32.345. That'll put him fifth. Right ahead of his teammate Montrose. Montrose coming to complete his second lap. He'll pick up some spots as he goes quicker. All the way up to third for the number one Autism Awareness Chevrolet. Nice lap there from Ian. Let's see who else we have out on qualifying times. John Garrett on his first time lap. Jeff Price and he's on his uh, warm-up lap. 16 cars here tonight. As I said, a little bit of competition for drivers tonight. Our friends at CTC normally racing with us have their own thing going on tonight. Hope that's going well for you. Daniel, Boo Trenton. Or is it Bo Trenton? <laughs> is he one of the like Luke and Bo Dukes? Bo Trenton? <laughs> There's the Boo. <laughs> John Garrett's first lap. Put him 10th. Jeff Price clocks in, goes in ninth. Here at second lap is quicker. Goes 32.3, moves him up to sixth. Check in on Price. He's hit the wall, the right front of that car. Been pushed in. So this car not going to have the qualifying speed it should. You can see the right front tire poking out from the fender. It's not supposed to look like that. Jeff completes the second lap and goes to eighth quick, so must have done that on his first lap. And I believe that's about it for race cars going around the track. John Geertz heading back to the pits. Final 30 seconds tick off. Hayden Lowell looks to be your pole sitter. As we'll watch John Garrett roll back to his pit. Let's talk with our pole sitter. Since he likes to talk a lot, we'll get it going early. Hayden, it is DG in the booth. You got a copy? <laughs> hey, Swiss. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? What is uh, with all the laugh? The, you just pulled me away from a very interesting conversation, but... Perfect. Huh? Well, we're sitting on pole here at Homestead Miami Speedway. You were able to edge out Cox there, even though he was faster in the practice. You got him when it counted in the qualifying. How do we feel about Homestead tonight? Uh, I feel pretty good. This is one of my favorite tracks, if not my... Th this is my favorite intermediate track on the surface, so... 
Uh, I got a pretty good track record here, so hopefully we can uh, keep that average finish in the, I think it's like one point, it might be two point something, but hopefully we can keep it um, at one or two. You know, that's that's exactly the sort of thing that makes people not like you so much. <laughs> Bragging about your, also, your average finish of a one point something. <laughs> hey, are you aware that this car only has two pedals? I was not aware of that. Like, if you look in the in the footwell, there is two pedals. There is not a, there is not a clutch pedal. I was hoping you were telling me there is a clutch and there's no brake pedal. Too soon for the 2000s jokes? No, Andrew just started telling the entire server. So, I apologize for the, the weather settings. This is 100% randomly generated, so there's a little bit of fog. Um, but uh, here we go. Yeah, you know, if you set your your humidity to like fifty uh, percent, and then set your your movers to like fifty percent, it won't go into the fog. <laughs> it was randomly generated, so. Well, good job picking a nice foggy night here. It's just we'll call it humid and hazy. It's already summertime in Miami. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, if you're wondering why everyone's car is great, it's not your screen. It's Hayden. It is absolutely my fault. <laughs> For what it actually is this time. All right, well, I have a starting lineup to do, and you're already on the back stretch. So bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> they were 12 starting lineup. Here we go. Really fast. We have Hayden Wall on the pole in the uh, 56 NAP car. Then we have Clint Cox in the 03 Black Flag brand Chevrolet. Ian Montrose in the Autism Aware, and his Chevy starts in third. Trent Steve, the Steve Tucson Game Farm Corvette in fourth. Griffin Jones, welcome back. The Persona 4 Golden Ford Fusion starts in fifth. John T. Gear, Crazy Owls Sports Bar. Chevrolet starts in sixth. Cody Cleaver, the Bucky's car. Very nondescript. Start seventh. Jeff Price in the back channel production Pontiac in eighth. Cliff Mullen in starting from the pits in the Pinnacle Trailer Sales Pontiac. Jeremy Shearer in the High Point Ford starts in tenth. Dalton Hayes Mountain Dew SA Chevrolet starts in the eleventh spot. Ethan Evers, the King of Beers Budweiser Black Eight car starts in twelfth. Oh my gosh, we're already going. <laughs> and True Beach starts back in thirteenth. Uh, oh my gosh, they're jumping every which way. Daniel Wall in fourteenth. Scott Ellison fifteenth. And Will Ashwater in sixteenth. Up front. Hayden Lowell, not a good start. He's fallen to third as Clint Cox trying to see to take the top two spots. He would feel working down the back stretch, heading straight towards the city of turn number three. Cox with the lead, Trenton second, Hayden third. Hayden rolling bottom, looks like he's going to try to save some tire. Montrose, John Garrett, and then Griffin Jones and Jeff Price. These are the Gen 4 cars, so lots of horsepower. And look at the fog. It is so foggy. So foggy. <laughs> Cody, right when I clicked it off. Appreciate you, bud. Yeah, I know, Cody. I saw that. But, like, he said it on random generation. I was trying to tell him how to fix it. Whoa, Dalton Hayes off the roll. Giving Andrew Beach a scare back there in 10th spot. Hayden gets into Clint Cox. He's going to turn him sideways. That's going to keep that feud going as the first caution waves. Right when we go back to the front of the field, Hayden Lull turns Clint Cox. Oh my goodness. That is no good. Well, let's get the drone out and see what happened. These two already upset about last week, and Hayden gets right into the back of it. Clint Cox goes flipping. Oh my gosh, John Gear gets a piece. Jeff Price gets a piece. Dalton Hayes looked like he did a pretty good job missing that. Oh, Scott Elston late clips the back end of the O3. Man. We'll see lots of cars hit the pit lane after that one. Oh my gosh, Travis! <laughs> Sorry about the little. Noise there. Forgot to turn the alerts off. Dalton Hayes, I think, does a really good job missing this. Let's watch the 47. Try to get through here. Yikes. He was dead sideways trying to stay off of the 03. Travis, appreciate the resub, my friend. 28 months in a row. What an absolute champion. Appreciate you so much. So we watch all the carnage here. Let's see what happens to Elston. He gets in here late, and the uh, 03 just kind of rolls down the track into him. And John Garrett got a piece, too. Right behind Montrose. Trenton and Montrose go high. John Garrett tried to go low, couldn't avoid him. Pushes him up into, I believe that it's Price. 
Price for running the top line there. And then, yeah, a little contact with Garrett. Shoots him up there. Griffin Jones gets a piece behind him as well, the 53. Let's see how bad his... Oof. Rough-looking front end for that 45. I'm sure Price is going to have to take that quick pair, and already has. Quick repair for Price. Let's see if Jones, I think he did do his. Jump back, see how bad his car looked. It doesn't look that bad coming in. But we'll see if that little scratch over on the blue side of the car disappears. Hey, he says that was scary. Yeah, the radio right now is probably real spicy. Mike's! Something about mics. Hey, what did you say? Uh, pay car speed is 65. But yeah, you see the di patch disappeared off of the Ford there, so he took his pass repair. It is 65. Like You'll get set for the restart. Uh, chat, give your opinions to Hayden. I didn't check his speed. So I, I don't know if he checked up, but initially it just looks like getting back up. <laughs> oh my gosh, this fog. <laughs> this fog is bad. That's even on the tighter shot. Moist, yes. It's quite moist here in Florida. Uh, is it wildfire season again? Trenton breaks out to the lead. Montro second. Cleaver third. Beach fourth. Price in fifth. Battling Dalton Hayes there. Hayes goes to the inside. Cleaver up the hill a bit. Hayden all the way down below the white line. Red Cell says, look like Hayden run over him. That was my first view as well, but I couldn't tell if he checked up or not in the lead car. Beach, Hayes, fourth and fifth. Jeff Price, Griffin Jones, Jeremy Shearer. Hayden rolls back up the ninth after he starts going back in the field. Let's see where Clint is. Clint is one lap down. Has not taken his fast repair. Happened to Clint. Fuck that wall. Daniel the wall and unhappy with the wall. We'll see why here shortly, but I'm trying to figure out what happened to Clint. Did he just not take the fast repair? I guess he didn't want to. I'm trying to stay on lead lap, but I don't think that's the right strategy. Trenton continues the lead here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Hayden's up to 7th. Ethan Evers, John Garrett battle. That's back for 11th. Somewhere in that fog. Damn it, Hayden. <laughs> Got one job. That looks like a Halloween race. Oh, Dalton Hayes. Big slide out of the corner. Saves it. Trying to find any cameras that don't get too funky. <laughs> it's not easy to do. Sorry, Griffin. I'd like to apologize to everyone for the fog. I, I don't know how to work the new weather stuff yet. Honestly, it gives the race a fun vibe. This would be cool for like a Halloween race. Wow, Hayden, I just said that. So, a couple of years ago, 2020, I built a truck race at Peralta and that was like this. And I put like a, an orange filter over it and made it look like everything was on fire. And that. <laughs> well, that does sound awesome. Look at that shot. Just smoke. 
barely see cars. Someone rubbed the fence there. This trend is under attack from Ian Montrose. See, this shot is useless. <laughs> you can't see a damn thing. A little better. Montrose putting on pressure here. Behind him. Four cars battling for that fourth spot. Caden's taking control of it. Andrew Beach, Griffin Jones, Jeff Price. The Pontiacs on the Ford. This is fifth, sixth, and seventh. Get settled. Trenton still has the one. Ian Mantra is right on his back bumper. They're in that smoke somewhere, I promise. There they are. Only wildfires in Florida affecting our race here. Sneed, Ian Machos, Cody Cleaver, top three, Hayden Moles back up to fourth, Griffin Jones fifth, Jeff Price sixth, Andrew Beach seventh, Jeremy Scher eighth, and Dalton Hayes ninth, Cliff Mullins tenth, Ethan Evers eleventh, John Garrett twelfth, Daniel Wallen thirteenth, Scott Elston fourteenth, and you have Will Asher Brandon in fifteenth, and Clint Cox. He's still out there trying to stay one lap down. He's entering turn three, and Trenton's coming out of turn two, so it won't be long until Clint goes another lap down. I really don't understand why he did not take his fast repair. Maybe he didn't know his car was that beat up. But I would assume if you took a roll, you would know <laughs> that your car's not in good shape. Ethan Evers, Cliff Mullins. This is for 10th. And there's the black 8. Cliff the gray and orange 37. He's Jeremy Scherer, battle for the 8th spot. That one gets by Scherer again. <laughs> yeah, Hayden might not want to get too close. He catches up to Clint. There's Clint. See if we can see the field in the background, but it's so damn foggy, can't see a damn thing. Clint's turning laps in the 33.166. Trenton's running 33.0, oh, so that's not horrible. Clint's car's still got some speed in it. Hayden's made his way up to second. He's past Montrose. Fourteen of our sixteen cars in this race, all still within about a second of each other. Trenton boosting those laps led stats. Trying to get those laps before Hayden gets there. Hayden consistently running quicker than Trenton by about two tenths a lap. So within the next three to four laps, Hayden should be right on our leader's back bumper. Teammates Montrose and Cleaver, third and fourth. And one and two machines. Griffin Jones. I haven't seen Griffin in a while. He's back out here running fifth. Jeff Price saw the damage he had in qualifying. Then that first incident, he had pretty tagged up both sides. So fast repair for him. He's out there in sixth. That's probably about where Clint Cox would be if he had done the fast repair. Chose not to. Dalton Hayes, 8. Ethan Evers, running night. Sheer in 10th. Cliff Mullins, 11. And 
about a second back to John Geary. He's got Daniel Wallen right behind him. Looks like Ethan Evers in the eight just dragged the wall a little bit on the right side, going through three and four. Cost him two spots. He drops from ninth to 11th. And John Garrett's been in the wall. His right front's banged in and pushed in. Daniel Llewellyn having a cussing fight with the wall. Car doesn't look too bad, though. Running 13th. He's got 14th. Then we got about seven and a half seconds back to Will Ashbrenner in this orange and blue 31 car. Clint running 33.5 the last lap. If we can see Trenton in the background anywhere. Yep, there they are. So about a straightaway. I'm so sorry. Is Clint Cox from going a lap down? Sorry, I hit the wall and I couldn't get out of it. I tried to break it up. It was a pass for the lead, and I don't think Trenton put up much of a fight at all. <laughs> By the time we go to it, it was already over. Hayden works the inside of. 81 and Trenton see. Trenton allows him through and then rides behind him. So Hayden back to the front. The next car Hayden's going to catch is Clint Cox. Let's see if we can see Clint's car from the roof of Hayden. It's so foggy. No, nope. just disappears into the fog. <laughs> Ride with Hayden for a lap or two here. He's all the way down to the white line. That can get very loose down there. Not the easiest thing to do to get all the way down there. Comes it down the back stretch, see all the palm trees. Hayden now running 33 11s now that he's out in clean air. This the field's about a 33 4, 33 5. Clint's damaged car, 33-9. She's settling for what appears to be a green flag run. Looking for battles on the track. Dalton Hayes, Jeremy Shearer, that's for seven. The other one's going to be John Garrett and Scott Elston for 13th. Man, this fuck. <laughs> it's so bad. There is Garrett and Elston, 66 and 85. that right front damage on the Camaro. Kind of cool to see the gauges glowing in the fog. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 2.30 a.m. right now on track. We will be racing into the sunrise. What? <laughs> it's kind of fun. See, never mind, I listen to Trenton. You should never do that. Stop <laughs> I wish I was remaining and not the actual time, but still saying it's actually the AM instead of PM. That's me. Take it to the first. Check out our race analysis while they're talking about all these things. Currently 6.54 a.m. Track temperature, a cool 69 degrees Fahrenheit. Wind speed, 6 miles. The new weather thing is really annoying to try to navigate. Stage points at the end of lap 55. Fuel window about 23, 29 to 33 laps.
We're currently at 29 for the drivers that have not pit yet. So we could be seeing those stops any minute now. It's Ethan Evers, Andrew Beach, Daniel Wallen, 10th, 11th, and 12th. Oh my gosh, this fog. <laughs> it's rough. John Garrett has peeled it off the track. 66 car somewhere on the pit lane there. I imagine he'll take his fast repair, get that car back to full speed. Aiden leads by two and a half seconds over Trenton Sneed. Montrose another two seconds behind Trenton and Montrose Cleaver and Griffin Jones, third, fourth, and fifth, all right there together. Thankfully, Montrose just rubbed the wall. Started at night. At night. Unfortunately, it's gonna end in the day. Hey, <laughs> you're talking ball. No you smash. And then Montrose trying to get his pit in while Beach was Shut up, Beach. People are trying to pit. Having his shit. <laughs> Here's Montrose down off the track. Second of our lead lap cars to hit the pit lane. Looks like brought Beach with them along with Dalton Hayes. So three cars pit that lap. 81 pit man, 81 pit man. Yeah. Two car pit men. Let's Hayden know. I feel Trenton's pitting. We'll see if Hayden... Here comes Clint Cox right as Hayden goes by. So right when things might have gotten juicy, Clint hits the pit lane. Hey, pit lane. Cody Cleaver on the pit lane. Jeff Price on the pit lane. Cliff Mullen stays out. Hayden all by himself now. It's Griffin Jones six uh, and a half seconds back. Is there a uh, caution at the stage or no? Nope. Nope, just green. Unless you're wrecked. I got that it's been a little while. Hayden stays out. All good. Here comes Griffin. Depends if Hayden needs one or not. Wow. Back. <laughs> Cliff Mullins on the pit lane. I mean, really it depends on if John needs one or not. Just John needed one a long time ago. You never threw it. <laughs> Aiden brings his leading he Napa card. The, the he did. He wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Jerry Sher, stay out another lap. We're going much longer than our window was. Did pit on that first caution. As did the other two. Lowell and Low. <laughs> Sounds like Jeremy Sher coming to the pit lane. Check in where Daniel Lowallen is. There's Daniel. Another second back from Jeremy. And Daniel's going to come to the pit lane. See where everything cycles around. Here's Hayden coming off the pit lane. And yes, the lap car of Asher ran between him and Montrose. Looks like everyone's stop was clean. I don't see any penalties, but two more cars still could pick them up as Cher and the wall are on the pit lane. Hayden leads by two seconds over Montrose. And with the fresher tires, should be able to stretch that out. Trenton Steed in third now. Cody Cleaver fourth. Griffin Jones in fifth. Jeff Price sixth. Dalton Hayes seventh. CC the 15 leaving the pit lane. All clean for him and Lawallen. So all 16 cars make their green flag stop without picking up a penalty. Things cycle through. Two second lead for Hayden. Then Hayden. That's Trenton Sneed and Cody Cleaver not too far behind as Cleaver is making a move for that third position.
cleaver in front of Sneed. Let's check in on Clint. Finally has taken that fast repair, but too little too late, I'm afraid. Lost so much time on that run. Clint Cox in 16th, running the fastest laps on the track. Putting in laps faster than Hayden Lowell. He just badly needs that caution. It's like Cleaver had a bit of a moment. Lost a second. Clint Steve was able to get back by. Griffin Jones working by the lap machine over last year. Running. Price Dalton Hayes, battle for the sixth spot. Here's Andrew Beach. A couple of Earnhardt schemes battling for 10th. Got rain off of turn four. <laughs> that would be something. The way you wiggled in turn two, I thought it was in that turn. We'll throw a caution just, I'm joking by the way when I say this, we'll throw a caution just before halfway, cross the halfway mark, and then wait for four hours before calling the race. <laughs> that sounds reasonable. Only if Hayden's leading though, right? Montrose and Steve, second and third. Next week you just need to call it at 9 a.m. I just need to not set the race for 9 a.m. Closing in on that halfway point. Good job. Check it on this group. John Garrett, Ethan Evers, Andrew Beach. Garrett and Evers is the best battle on track right now. Here, running it down low. Ethan about to lane off the fence. Ethan gets to Garrett's outside there. Power pass in the bud Chevy. Ethan's still running that high line. Starts to put a gap on Garrett. Looks like Garrett's trying to figure out the line Ethan's running. seconds behind Cliff and closing in that will be for 7th keep an eye on the timing and scoring looking for any kind of battles so Montrose 2nd, Sneed 3rd that's about a half second between them and Price and Hayes also about a half second apart and John Garrett's closed back in on Ethan Evers You can have a bobble. Lost about a second. Andrew Beach saw him get sideways coming out of turn four. Save it, brother. Save it. Hayden's way out front in the Arc Music Gen 4 Cup Series. To keep an eye on the rest of the field. <laughs> the second largest gap on the track is the gap from first to second. And the gap larger is the long and Ashley. Waiting 
for round two of Pit Stops, but I think we get halfway before then. Daniel Wallen gets around Scott Elston. Elston lost about a second on that lap, so he must have had a bit of a loose condition as well. Andrew Beach, Jeremy Shearer, 15 and 71 doing battle. Share on the low side. Gets past Andrew Beach. Picks up the 11th spot. Trenton has caught second place Ian Montrose. Let's see if he can do something with the in here. Get the position before halfway. Pick up an extra point. Montrose drives it on in there deep. Starts to drift up the hill. Here comes Trenton. Looking back to the inside. Get fire out of the pipes of both cars as they lift going into the corner. Trenton eases his Corvette ahead of Montrose's Impala. Up to that second spot. Garrett has Ethan Evers and Jeremy Shearer right there with him. Shearer and Evers door to door. Daniel Wallen is trying to pass Andrew Beach at the same time. So lots going on back there towards the back of the pack. Evers trying to get back past John Garrett. Hey, Racing Mug, how are you? Hopefully you caught Trenton taking over second spot there. So watch the eight car, Ethan Eakers. Try to battle the 66 with John Garrett. Jeremy Shearer waiting in the wings. Once they get single final, see who's going to try to pass. Eakers in the Monte Carlo down low. John Garrett up high in the Camaro. Ethan clears him. See if Garrett goes back to the inside, but Jeremy Shearer is there. Garrett's going to follow Ethan into the corner and then dives into the bottom. See if he pulls off the slide job, drifts up in front. Up the track he comes. He's going to stay in the middle. Try to pinch Jeremy Shearer down low. So they go three wide here. Three wide for ninth? Why not? Ethan Evers back out in front of this trio. Ethan Jones, meanwhile, is running down Cody Cleaver, and that is for fourth. Right now, all the passing and action is back here. Jeremy Sherry gets around John Garrett up into the top ten. In the turn number three. As we get back to the stripe, the two laps to go to get to the stage. Aiden ahead of Clint. Clint now two laps down. Trenton 7.4 seconds back in second. Shows third. That's Cody Cleaver, Griffin Jones in close proximity. Jeff Price five seconds back from that group. Dalton Hayes another 1.7, then Cliff 1.4. Ethan five seconds back of that, and then Ethan has a host of cars behind him. Jeremy Shear, John Garrett, Daniel Wallen. Then Andrew Beach not too far in the background there. And Scott Elson. 9th to 14th, relatively close on track. See them all there. And the final lap of the stage. Aiden's going to bring it out turn number four, pick up the halfway bonus. He may have to hit this button a couple times with the lead he had. <laughs> Trenton just now coming out of turn number four. 
He'll pick up nine points for the stage. Montrose will get eight. Cleaver, seven. Griffin Jones, six. Jeff Price will pick up five. Dalton Hayes will get four. Cliff Mullins, three. And Jeremy Scherer, two. And Ethan Evers will get the final point. John Garrett, Daniel Wallen, they battle for 11th. Lots of close battles on track. This trio, third, fourth, and fifth, will keep an eye on them for a little bit. Honchos, Cleaver, and Griffin Jones. Griffin dives down to the bottom. Don't know why I went to hit. <laughs> Griffin Jones tried to take away the spot from Cody. Montro slides up in front of Cody. That may slow them both down. Griffin Jones gets them both. Nice move there by number 53 forward. Griffin up into the podium positions. This is about four seconds behind Trenton Sneed and Trenton about eight seconds behind Hayden. So it's like we got two Red Bulls, one and two, running away from the field. And then we got the midfield. The, the rest of the drivers they're putting on a better show Griffin Jones, Ian Manchos, Cody Cleaver you know, Cliff and Dalton 7th and 8th and we have Shearer and pretty much the rest of the field <laughs> Shearer, Ethan Evers Daniel Lawler, John Garrett, Scott Elson Andrew Beach 6 cars all running there together and there's Hayden coming to put him a lap down in the background I see the Napa car Like Clint Cox had another pit stop. He's now three laps down in the 03. And the last runner one lap down in the 31. Strong second place run tonight. It's like Dalton Hayes. Lap 60. Brings his car to the pit lane. It appears we're going for a three stop strategy for most cars tonight. 47 hits his box. Dalton, the first of the lead lap cars to come down. Here Ethan Evers says he's bringing the eight to pit road. First stop. Scott Elston, John Garrett, Ethan Evers all hit the pit lane. 31's pitting, 31's pitting. Well, Asher Brenner. He's, he's, he's coming to the pit lane next time by. It's like Ian Montrose stole one car. Splitting strategies because Cody Cleaver did not go with him this time. Jeff Price, the 45, also on the pit lane. There's Elston heading out as Price gets into his box. Had a little bit of a backup there. Had to back up before they would service the car. Eighty-one pitman, eighty-one pitman. Clint Cox has passed through last year. Moved up the spot. Watch our second place car ahead to the pit lane. Two pitting. Two pitting. Comes Trenton Sneed off the racetrack, slowing down. To the pit lane speed, here comes Griffin Jones, third place car, fourth place Cleaver, all hitting the pit lane together. Cliff Mullins, he's going to bring his Pontiac 56 down. Pitting, 56. Jeremy Scherer. He's going to stay out. Him and the Wallen were the last two to pit last time. Looks like Hayden brings his 56 Napa Chevy to the pit lane. Leader of the cars that pit so far is Montrose.
Makes his way onto the front stretch. I'm sure he'll pick up several spots with three cars on the pit lane. It's like Asher Renner may be done for the night. Gets all the way up to fifth. Jeremy Shearer takes over the race lead as he gets by Hayden Lull. Hayden's already off the pit lane. <laughs> he won't be able to do that much longer. See Shearer in the wall. On the 15th place, Clint Cox. It's Daniel. Daniel's coming down this time. Shearer stays out. And Phil Pontiac hits the pit lane. There's Hayden Mall, the highest running car now that has completed a stop. Trenton back in his spot. Right behind Hayden. So he should overtake Daniel and move up to third here. And when Cher pits, they'll be first and second once again. And there it is, Jeremy Cher. High point Mustang. Runs the tank drive and brings it to the pit lane. Daniel Wallen making his way off the pit lane. Get passed by John Garrett. Daniel get passed by Beach as well. I don't know if Scott will get by. I think he will. Daniel's still... Oh, Beach is going to go around. 71 Andrew Beach and that caution waves. And I'm sure most of the field is excited about that. What happens to Andrew Beach here? Running right on that seam, and that right, can sometimes upset no the car. Anymore. Oh my gosh, Daniel went to the inside to try to avoid him, and Beach's car started to slide that way. That's what triggered the caution. There goes Trenton. Well, first car middle back. There goes Hayden's big 10 second lead. 11 cars on the lead lap. Clint Cox one lap down along with the wall in Elston Beach. So he is now at least back in the game. He can fight for Lucky Dogs now. I'm sure Hayden will stay out. It just came off the pit lane. So I doubt we're going to get wave arounds here. Well, Hayden's coming down. So that means we need to watch Trenton. Trenton's going to stay out. So we're not going to get lucky wave arounds here. <laughs> Trenton and Griffin Jones stay out. Everyone else hits the pit lane. If you get some caution, you might be able to make it to the end from here. Drivers are going about 35. They'd have to go 41. It's close. Get some caution laps. Clutch it. Might be able to make it. But Hayden and Griffin Jones not taking this opportunity to fill the tank. So they're making that will not be the end of it. Does Jeremy wreck Hayden for the fuck of it? That'd be entertaining. Giggity. Lap 69, giggity. It's the nice lap, yeah. Trenton, Griffin, Jerry, Shearer, your top three. Shearer not fitting either. First one off the pit lane. Hayden Lowell topped off the tank. Jeff Price may have taken two tires. Eight seconds stop for him. Let's see if we can find him. See if he'll tell us. Well, hi, Jeffrey. Hi. How's it going? Not great. Not great? <laughs> I mean, we're sitting there in the fifth spot. Did we take two tires there? Yeah, because, you know, I like death. Evidently, you seem to be a fan if you're encouraging it that much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I'm literally plowing uh, everywhere. Even... Like, I'm loose on exit like everybody else, but I just can't get this thing to go into the corner, so. Got to do something different. My tires weren't that bad. At least on the left sides weren't, so. I went ahead and made a change on the mid-pit stop. But I wasn't planning on taking two until I looked down and seen 99s, so. I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, I'm not like some people. If I can't hold on to it, I'm just going to let them go. TF4, well, good luck. Hope you don't die. 
I appreciate it. I'm trying You're not to fun call up you. There? Oh yeah, I'm trying not to call you um, Adam Cruzier with the 45. It's hard though. Yeah, it's kind of a. Uh, everybody else took my numbers and they're not even here. <laughs> yeah, Anyways. yeah. Blame, blame the Dominic Lee fella. Yeah, uh, this freaking guy. I know, right? Doesn't even have the courtesy to show up after week one. <laughs> Such, it's my life. So I'm, I'm getting kind of used to it. Maybe that's why I suck so bad. I'm in the 45. Well, I think we're going to enforce the rule next season where the person with the highest number of starts gets to take the number. That'd be awesome. Right? Like, Reward you guys. Ever up. since I've been in the 45, I die. It's a bad luck number. And especially, you know, Adam Petty died in that number. So, you know. You know? Like, <laughs> I used to love it. It used to be my favorite number. And then, like, I wanted to die every race. And then I changed numbers and I started winning. So you saved the 19 for a while. Yeah. I'm See? either the 14, 19, or 9. Oh, God. Yeah, don't be the 14. Nobody wants to be Mikey. Yeah, I always give him first pick. <laughs> I well, like him. Ten four. That makes one of you. Anyways. <laughs> Good luck. We'll yeah, see. Uh, see I how this two tire thing goes. I'm gonna try not to die. I'm gonna just hold on to your life. I think. So and if you do die, outside. at least make it interesting and entertaining. Oh, my ass is gonna hang that shit left. No. <laughs> right at the Hayden, right? Yep. I want. He, like he, he's complaining that he's not having fun leading, so let's not let him lead anymore. Right. Fix that problem. Yeah. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Hayden, if you're bored, lead and stop leading. I'm not lead. I mean, in the future. Well, I gave up my lead intentionally. I just didn't expect that many people to also pit. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> uh, Trenton and Griffin Jones are going to lead him back to the flag. Let's see how this shakes out, because Jeremy Sherrod decided to get out of there. He was running third. Trenton and Price working that teammate restart. Griffin Jones trying to hang on there in third. And we have a mix-up field for once. 13 cars run the lead lap. Clint Cox is about spinning out there. Daniel Wallen's up into the wall. So let's see what happened to Daniel before anything crazy happens. Oh, he was right there on the door of Clint Cox. Cliff was all the way down in the grass, and then Clint gets Daniel in the door, Daniel goes up to the wall. Why was Cliff in the grass? And just more and more and more to this replay. Cliff just loses it on corner entry. <laughs> it was down into the grass. My goodness. Well, that was all special, but up front, we have a cluster fuck going on. <laughs> Sneaker and Jones. Jeff Price, Ian Montrose. Hale Hayden's right there as well. They are putting on a show up front in the fog. Thank you for picking out bright cars so we can see them. Montrose right on the bumper of Griffin Jones. Shocked that car didn't get a little loose he was so close. And I am a fan of that caution coming out because this is way more entertaining. Montrose surges to the lead. Griffin Jones trying to run that middle. See Price all the way up by the fence. Six cars in the lead pack. Well, we're having fun all of a sudden. Clint Cox is in the lucky dog spot ahead of Andrew Beach. Those two cars relatively close on track. There they are. So that battle something to keep an eye on. Montrose out in front. Trenton trying to battle Griffin Jones for second. Montreux is kind of known as a hard charger. Not surprised to see him jump out to the lead. Montreux also has a little bit fresher tire than most of these guys. He did take four tires in that last stop. Dalton Hayes also took four tires. He's back in fifth. Aiden up to second, Trenton third, Griffin Jones in battle for that third spot. Dalton Hayes, there he is in fifth. And Jeff Price took two tires. See him sliding back to the sixth spot. Cody Cleaver in seventh. Cleaver took four tires in that last stop. Jerry Shearer topped off the tank. 
Ethan Weaver six tires. John Garrett filled up the tank. Griffin Jones battling Trenton Sneed once again. Sneed going to use that outside line to propel down the backstretch. Dalton Hayes going to take a look for three wide here. Fortunately, Griffin noticed he was there. Backs out of it a little bit. Let Trenton ahead. Now the two of Cleaver way up by the wall. Try to get to the outside of Griffin Jones. Griffin losing three spots in a lap. Trenton, Dalton, and Cody Cleaver all getting by him. They're still trying to go three wide. Is Cleaver ripping the top up there, making it work in that Bucky's car. And three wide we go. Dalton Hayes, <laughs> no idea where to go with everyone there. Let's see what Cleaver gets to his outside. The 53 of Jones gets to his inside. Trenton has to back out of it. Putting on a show in the fog and smoke here in Florida. Oh, Griffin Jones going to slide to the inside. Saves the race car. Doesn't hit the wall. But loses a ton of spots. Falling all the way back to 8th, ninth. Tough break for Griffin. Meanwhile, Macho is starting to be stalked by Hayden. Napa Ford closing in to the front of the pack with 30 laps to go. There's Cleaver. Dalton Hayes, Trenton Steed. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. Then Jeff Price on those two tires. In this battle, Griffin Jones trying to make his way back forward. He's already picked up two spots after the slide. John Garrett 10th. Cliff Mullins after his foray into the grass, running 11th. Scott Elston 12th. Daniel Wall in 13th. Clint Cox still ahead of Andrew Beach by about four seconds now. Cox controls the lucky dog. Should we get a caution here in the last 30? Dalton Hayes gets past Cody Cleaver for third. And Cleaver gets back ahead. The Mountain Dew and the Bucky's car is battling. Gets ahead off the corner exit, but then the two car using that high line momentum pushes back ahead. See Trenton in the background lurking. And now everyone from Cleaver back to Cliff Mullins in 11th are all within a second of one another. We're getting draft off one another as we hit 30 to go officially, now 29. Cleaver really making that high line work for him. Does take a little bit extra gas up there, though. Let's we'll see if anyone's trying to make it to the end. I don't think there's any fuel saving going on with like Montrose, Hayes, or Cleaver. The fact that Hayden hasn't taken the lead could mean he is trying to save. Dalton Hayes has gone around, as has Cody Cleaver, so they must have made contact. There it is. Cleaver gets right up underneath Dalton. And they go into the inside wall. Not surprising. Let's take a look at the drone shot here. Dalton got loose right in front of Cody. Cody was trying to avoid him sliding up in front of him. Dalton was trying to hold it left to not slide up in front of him. So they both kind of went to the inside there. And Dalton got loose right in front of Cody. Cody gets into the inside wall. Oof, Dalton almost wrecked it. He's going to bring it down to the pits under green. Put the drone back away for now. It's, there's Montrose and Hayden. Trenton now third. Jeff Price, Griffin Jones, Ethan Evers, Jerry Shear, John Garrett, Cliff Mullins. So all those cars move up two spots with the crash. He's in his pit box. Cody got some pretty serious front end damage and left front as he hit the inside wall. It's a shame Cody was really running well ripping the top line. John Garrett running that line down to 66. So he works outside Cliff and Mullins. This is for the eighth spot. There's Clint Cox just ahead. Clint ripping that high line has some right front damage, so I think he got up into it a little bit. He told us in qualifying that jobs not to hit the outside wall. Apparently, he has failed that job. So 
Trenton third. There's Griffin Jones, Jeff Price, Ethan Evers. Not a second and a half to Jeremy Shear. Jeremy has Cliff Mullins running down his inside. Jeremy catches the wall on corner entry. John Garrett trying to run high. And Jeremy is up there. This is battle for eight. Hayden Hall maintaining about that three tenths distance behind Ian Montrose. Yeah, Lucas, they went a little foggy tonight on accident. <laughs> they said it's your random generated and I guess forgot that that means it could be foggy. Montrose continues to lead in the one over Hayden Law. 2.6 to go. I have to believe Hayden's just saving at this point. Trenton Sneed third. Griffin Jones fourth. Jeff Price fifth. Ethan Evers sixth. Then Cliff Mullins. Jeremy Shearer. Scott Elston. Daniel Lawlin and John C. Garrett. Garrett on the pit lane. He's splitting up the run. Fox will go by John Garrett. Which means he will move up to 12th. Hayden's starting to put pressure on Manchos. You know, Ian charged out to the lead there on those tires. Now he's 20 laps into the run. Guys are deciding they're not going to make it to the end. Cleaver had that damage anyway, so he probably wants to come down and take the fast repair and get the best car he can have back out there. Everybody can make it to the end from here. Stalton Hayes, John Garrett have hit the pit lane. I don't know if anyone's going to be make it all the way to the end from our green flag. It'll be a tall order, especially for Trenton Steve and Griffin Jones who didn't pit. Somebody like a Hayden Lowell who's sitting behind Mancho saving might be able to make it to maybe, maybe three laps to go. And hope for a caution. Hayden, DG, got a cuppy. Hi, Swiss. What are you, about three laps short? More than three. More than three. Uh, try ten. Good golly. Okay, so we're definitely picking. <laughs> yeah. It's a handful. In fact, uh, watch this. All right, can I get a live pit stop while talking to you? Yes, sure, sir. Sure are. Look at that. Hayden Lowell out of second place. Drops it down off the racetrack while we're talking to him. Brings the Napa Chevy to the pit lane. Going to cut these runs basically in half. Indeed we are. We're going to take four tires and fill up full of fuel here. The Goodyear tires and the Sunoco fuel. Yes, sir. To the attention of that Napa racing team. Um, Becca's really sad that you missed the pit wall there. I nearly did the Larson earlier. In the I know. The last the last pit stop, you damn near hit it. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was close. I was, I was quite laughing that it was almost the Larson per, to perfection. I mean, same track and everything. You got company, Trenton and Cliff down there with you. I'm sure... Oh, no, Ian didn't pit that time. Okay. No. Ian stays out on track. Looks like Griffin Jones is at the pit lane. Very interesting. I thought Ian would have tried to immediately cover. Nope. I think he wants to try and keep you a lap down as long as possible and hope for the yellow. <laughs> I mean, that's a that's a fair strategy. Yeah. I mean, if you can't beat him, beat him, right? Pretty much. <laughs> well, well what's uh, your thoughts on the race here with 17 to go? That it's loose all of a sudden. And all this fog. Um, Do you expect all this fog? The weather report? No, I just randomly generated weather settings and said that looks fine to me and, and moved on. But we'll make sure that the uh, allow heavy fog little checkbox is un unchecked next week. That would be helpful. <laughs> we'll also make sure that I double check AM versus PM race times. AM is fun though. Jeff Price on the pit lane in the 45. It was. It's definitely interesting. It's different. Yeah, exactly. I mean, morning fog makes sense. 
I, the fog makes does make a lot more sense now, yes. <laughs> Just, it's, it's very logical. Well, we currently have three cars on the lead lap. Be a great time for yellow. That'd be a very... And here comes Ian. Well, Ian's off the track and heading in. Hayden gets himself unlapped. Jeremy Scherer has been one of the longest running cars on each one of these pit stops. We'll see how long he hangs it out there. He has decided it is time to come down right now. And that leaves Daniel the Wallen, the last action hero. Daniel says he ain't hidden. Keeps that 23 Labor 12 Pontiac out on track. So Ian's going to have, what is that, five lap pressure tires? Yes, but you're going to have this, this the, entire what, run. One and a half second gap over him. All right, per looks lap. Like it's be more than one. <laughs> Looks like it's probably going to be two seconds. And he's getting back up to speed. Two. 2.5. He's into the corner now, so it should be stabilizing right around here. Two, four. I mean, if he's a tenth and a half faster a lap, he's going to get to me. He's very good on new tires. We'll see. He's actually still losing ground. So now he needs about two tenths a lap, which is a little... He still is a ground, though. <laughs> I got very loose all of a sudden. Oh, is that why he started gaining? Yes. <laughs> Daniel's the leader, though. Daniel's like, I don't, I don't want to pit. I'm just going to stay out of here the rest of the race for out of gas. I mean, we've got... At least I have two sets of tires left in the pit lane. Daniel So he's 32 laps since his car was on pit lane. He went down the backstretch. I would assume everyone at least has one more set of tires at their disposal. So if we get a yellow, everyone's coming back in. For sure. For sure. Everybody should still have at least one set. We've got a lot of green flags, so a lot of sets should be still set there. And look at that! There is the caution. What has brought this out? Clint Cox? See, it ain't so. And that changes everything. What really changes is Clint Cox is on the lead lap. We have to go all the way back around to catch the pace car. Jeez. Come on, Fred. Clint Cox off the wall, loses it, drifts it down the track, loops it back up, holds the brake, keeps the Daniel car off the wall. Clint Cox gets the caution he needs by, um, let's say, what Becca said, imagine that. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Well, I can't do anything without a protest, so... <laughs> Alright, well, well uh, choice, have fun watching the last, I would assume, probably seven laps are going to be great. I mean, you're assuming no green-white checkers. I, I am assuming no green-white checkers, which is bold of me. Very, very... Good luck! I need it. Okay, bye. Sorry, I got rid of him before I saw your you text message on that sender, else I would have told him. <laughs> Cody, that's my thoughts. They're going to bunch him back up, and it's going to be a short sprint to the end, and the fastest car is going to be restarting 14th. Oh, we got a hydrate in. Hell yeah. I've we'll almost finished this entire class. It's been a lot of talking. Here comes the field down the pit lane. Daniel Lawallen, race leader, leads him down to the pit lane. How about that? Labor 12 Pontiac hits his box very slowly. There he goes. <laughs> Daniel might lose the lead just based on that. And what the huh? Clint Cox has stayed out. Clint Cox has stayed out. That is, well, let's just say that's not going to be the strategy. <laughs> the tires are 30 laps old on this car. This, this is not the move. Corey deals as he knows the plan. 
Machos, the first one out. 7.2 seconds. I believe... I believe that's a little too fast for two tires. That may be no tires, but let's go ask him. Why well, guess when we can ask? Ian, DG, you got a couple? Hello. Hello. Well, we see you're in the box for 7.2 seconds. Was that two tires or no tires? That would be Talon. Uh, I already took two tires on the outside, so I took two tires on the inside to balance it out. Ah, uh, there we go. That makes sense. Apparently two tires on the inside is faster than two on the outside, as the two behind you also took two tires. A lot of twos going on here. Yeah, what did Clint do? What did Cliff do? Two tires on the Clint. outside. Clint? No, no, Clint. Clint stayed out. He, he did not pit. Okay, we'll see about that then. I don't know. We'll yeah, see. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not going to be the move, I, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, something tells me this will, this will backfire somehow, especially after you interviewed me now. I've got the cars. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, maybe Clint's just trying to make sure the 56 doesn't win? Yeah, what, what makes you think that? <laughs> few reasons, I don't know. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> oh my goodness, well, we'll see how it all shakes out, good luck. Cheers, thank you. Ian Monstro's taking two left side tires, as he took two right side tires earlier. Cliff, stop blanking. What? I'm not blinking. You were blinking. We what? synced it. Everybody what synced it. <laughs> well, we took two tires, much like Wancho, so you've uh, taken two right side tires here. Clint Cox has no tires. All likelihood you'll be starting behind him. Uh, what do you think about this restart? Well, I can tell you one thing. He does like last week. He's got the right one behind him. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, I want to see him play some games with this one because I'll drive right up on him. I don't care. <laughs> and you blinked again. There you are. That's cool. Yeah, what happens if you blink into him like the uh, the pit road race? Uh, hey, I was really good in that, so there you I go. Know how to just get right on up in there? <laughs> Give it a little tap, tap, tap. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> well, about half a lap away from getting this thing restarted. What's your prediction here? Uh, he's gonna spin the tires and take Ian out and everybody else. Perfect. And then Hayden wins anyway. Probably. <laughs> Right. He's got four. I got two. I can't hold him off. Well, good luck. We'll see how it all shakes out. Yep. Thank you. I don't want to jinx Jeff Price, so I'm not going to interview That way, if he wrecks, it's his thing, not me. Clint's going down to the apron. What just happened? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> What's happening? Clint Cox is headed to the pit lane. Okay. Well, that's a development. Cliff tries to get going on his two tires. Hayden Lowell's looking to his inside. Can Cliff hold him off? He's going to squeeze him. That allows the 56 to check up a bit. Rancho is going to try to run away. He's essentially on four fresh tires as he took two and then two. Montrose has Jeff Price right behind him. Montrose always pretty good on the short runs. Trenton back in, or Hayden back in fourth, Trenton fifth. Then Griffin Jones. And this is a bit of a mess back here. Montrose leading with six laps to go from Homestead Miami Speedway. Jeff Price second, Cliff Mullins in third, then Hayden Lull. Trenton Sneeds running fifth. Clint Cox. I guess stayed out the lead some laps because he is now in the pit. Lane. Oh, Andrew Beach going to lose it in the background. Andrew Beach keeps it off the inside wall, but the 71 will fall back to 14th. Last guard lead lap. Hayden Lowell trying to work to the outside of Cliff Mullins. Ian Monchos out in front in the number one. Now five laps to go. Hayden's now going full send, running that top line right up by the fence. Trying to work the outside of the 37 of Cliff Mullins. Cliff in the 37 is going to get way out of shape going down the back stretches. He's going to save it. No, he's going to slide it into the inside wall and nose it there. And that should put him 14th last car in lead lap. So you have Montrose and Price and then Hayden Lowell. Top three with five to go. Montrose's best friend right now is the 45 of Price, but they are teammates, so I don't suspect... Price holding up Hayden that much. The 
go side by side down the back stretch and Hayden clears the second. He's going to have essentially three and a half laps to try and get past Ian Montrose for the lead. That's what 37 does. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, that is what he does. I mean, he has a whole podcast just for it. Montrose into turn number one with three laps to go. The gap, about a half second over Hayden Law. Can he hold him off for three laps? Let's look back from our race leader. There is the gap, first to second. It is not much, and it is shrinking. See the four tenths. Hayden's going to start to eat up that gap coming off the corner. Gets it down to three tenths. Now down to two. Ian Montrose has two laps to try and figure out how to hold off Hayden Lowell. Hayden is right there. He's going to look to the outside. Montrose protecting the bottom. Hayden's been running well up on the wall. Hayden's going to do a crossover here, I would imagine. Try to get those inside. Montrose not able to cover it. Hayden's going to get to the bottom. On the final lap we go. Hayden's going to send it into one. Montrose trying to pinch him down. But Hayden's going to clear. And Montrose falls the second as Hayden Lowell takes over the race lead. On the final lap. Gets a little squirrely coming off the corner. But Hayden able to get the final lap move. Montrose with the full send on the inside. Packed it into the corner. And nothing doing there on corner exit. Hayden Lowell is going to bring it off turn number four and win at Homestead with the last lap pass. Montrose gets second. Griffin Jones, your podium. Trenton Steed, Jeff Price pick up top five. Sean Garrett, six. Dalton Hayes, seventh. Jerry Sherry, eighth. Cody Cleaver, ninth. And Daniel Llewellyn looks like did not get the top ten spot. Scott Elston edged him for it at the line. Scott Elston will bring it home in 10th. Hayden gets it done with a last lap pass. Well, you made it interesting with the last lap pass there for the win. How did you get it done, Mr. Hayden? Uh, four tires versus two definitely helped out a lot. Yeah, he told me that he was basically on four fresh tires because he took a left that time because he had just taken the rights. Yeah, the homestead it, it chews through tires. Even two or three percent can um, be pretty huge here, and just yeah, a lap shorter, and and I'm not the winner of this race. So probably one of those admin perks they keep talking about in in uh, in chat. <laughs> admin perk of setting the lap count. You somehow knew this would happen. Right, right. Yeah, just I knew this three months ago when I made the schedule. That damn Napa know-how, I tell you. Yeah, let me. Yep. <laughs> so much better than get up and go. I, I tend to agree. <laughs> Congrats on the win here at Homestead. Had to earn this one. You got the friends, family, and sponsor shout outs for us. I'd like to thank Napa Auto Parts, Arc Music, C2X, and Madigan Motorsports as always. would like to thank you, Swiss, for putting on the broadcast. Uh, we'd like to thank all the other partners over at Sidewinder Racing Leagues and all the other admin that make our um, nine leagues on six days of the week. Uh, go go off without too many hitches and, and get broadcasted with, I guess, the exception of street stocks. So, and MX-5s, as you've corrected me before. <laughs> so, um, yeah, big shout out to everybody there. And uh, we'll go on to Bristol next week. I'm sure that'll be great. And there will be no controversies there, I'm sure. No, no, there would never. Everyone's going to get along just fine. Just peachy. <laughs> All right. We'll see you in the uh, last great Coliseum and see how it goes next week. Good luck. Thank you very much, Swiss. Hayden Lowell getting the victory tonight. Let's track down Mr. Montrose, bringing home the P2. I think he is actually up in the waiting room for me. Thank you. Thank you, Ian, for being in the waiting room. I appreciate you, my friend. No problem, as always. We're going to try and find your car on track while we you know, click the replay button and install for time. There, there, yep, nope, yep, that's Griffin Jones. Let's, uh, how about Ian? There we go. <laughs> I really just wanted to show Griffin for some reason. Anywho, <laughs> we bring that Autism Awareness Chevrolet home in that second spot. One lap shy of winning this thing. I don't know. Would you maybe need to hold him off? A wider car or something? Wider car, more speed, more talent probably. Uh, and I don't think Hayden was fully pushing either. So, um, yeah, you know, he, he earlier on in the race, he gained something crazy like five tenths in one lap. So, uh, yeah, you know, I was just happy with that performance in the end. Uh, definitely had a little bit more short run pace and the long run I was getting better at as the race went on. But um, still. 
happy to control that car with, you know, outsides and then insides. So balance the car out correctly. And uh, yeah, P2 is pretty, pretty good. We'll take that. I was going to throw a slider, but I thought better of it in the end. So it's probably for the best. I mean, it would have made the highlight reels. <laughs> yeah, probably for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> Congrats on the P2 and get on out of here. Enjoy it. And uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow. Yeah, appreciate you, dude. Appreciate uh, Hayden for putting on the league and uh, Arc Music for sponsoring and uh, yourself for broadcasting and then my teammate coding. Appreciate you, everybody. Team four. Man, I almost forgot to ask you that, didn't I? Yeah, no big deal. I got you, bud. He appreciate it. You know, I think I would know what I'm doing by now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, appreciate take it, care. DG. Yeah, Montrose getting that P2. We'll go ahead and bring in the 53 of Griffin Jones. Griffin, DG, you got a copy? Hi, yes. Hello. Hello. Well, a strong uh, return to the Sidewinder Racing Leagues. You bring it home here in the third position, getting a podium in your first race back this season. How good did it feel to be back? Honestly, I... <clears throat> voice crack, excuse me. I uh, honestly, notice. I had a lot of fun tonight. It was uh, good, just green flag runs, kind of comers and goers. I, I had a lot of fun tonight. It was a good race. 10 4, a lot of uh, passing opportunities because the homestead track, nice and spread out, lots of options. And you brought it home in third tonight. A yeah, pretty strong run. You got the Friends Family Sponsor shout outs for us tonight. Uh, shout out to my mom. She's looking for a job right now. Uh, hopefully that works out good for her. And um, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just a fun race. All right. Well, glad you had fun. Welcome back. And hopefully we'll see you in some more races here soon. I'm going to try to run a few more this year. Not too many, but I think uh, I got two or three scheduled on the on the season. And there you go. You want to let your fans know what races those will be? Ah, uh, this is looking back at it. Going to try to run at least Daytona and Texas and Indy, I think, coming up next. Maybe Chicago as well, depending on how my schedule plays out. A mile and a half and bigger. Got it. Yeah, I'm, that's pretty much what I'm trying to do is get some more laps on those tracks. And uh, tonight was a very good, good experience. I'm very, I'm very glad I ran this race. And four, congrats on that third place run, and we'll see you in some more races in the future. Thank you. I appreciate it. Griffin Jones brings it home in P3. Go ahead and look at our final results from the night. I promise we have them coming up shortly. Hayden Lowell with the win. Ian Montrose, Griffin Jones on the podium. Trent Snead, Jeff Price getting top fives. John Garrett, Dalton Hayes, Jerry Sherry, Cody Cleaver, and Scott Elson all picking up top tens tonight. Then page two, Daniel Lawala, Andrew Beach, Cliff Mullins, Ethan Evers, Clint Cox, and Will Asherbrenner rounding out the 16 starters tonight. As we said, a little bit of a short field as we had some competition for car count tonight with uh, one of our close friends leagues kicking off tonight with some racing. So hopefully everyone enjoyed tonight's broadcast here in the ARC Music Cup Series. Appreciate each and every one of you being here and watching tonight. Hope you had a great time and we'll be back at it tomorrow. We have the Xfinity Series, the Fort Worth Screen Printing Xfinity Series. Should be a great one there. Thank you guys so very much. We'll see you tomorrow night.